Do you guys remember this video of the Cybertruck crash test that Tesla released on April 1st where the impact was imminent at any second and you're on the edge of your seat the entire time waiting for it to happen, but it never actually happens? Well, we finally got to see those results during the Cybertruck delivery event, and I must admit, it looks absolutely horrifying, but probably not for the reasons you're thinking. There's been a massive amount of criticism of these crash tests by internet experts. See what I did there? who say that the Cybertruck is extremely poorly designed and dangerous, and not only dangerous for the people on the receiving end of it, but for the occupants inside as well. But is any of it actually true? Well, on first glance, when you watch the video in isolation, it sure looks like it might be, especially that full frontal crash. I mean, the truck was only going 35 miles an hour during this test, and look how much force is being inflicted on the passengers. So much force, in fact, that even the rear axle appears to snap in half. That can't be normal, right? The internet experts will tell you that the reason for this is that the stainless steel body is so strong that it can't crumple properly in an impact, which in turn directs those forces directly onto the occupants inside. Here's a video one of the experts made comparing it to other trucks which he says have actual crumple zones. This video got 5.5 million views and basically universal agreement in the comments that the Cybertruck is terribly designed and unsafe in every way possible. But what if I were to tell you, and I know this is going to sound completely crazy, but what if I were to tell you that these experts may not be experts at all or even have any clue at all what they're talking about? That comparison video was put together using completely different crash tests. The Cybertruck's the only one here doing a full frontal crash, where the others are doing what's called the front overlap, where only about a third of the front hits the barrier, which is much easier to dissipate energy. Here's a more fair comparison, showing it against one of the highest safety rated trucks you can buy, the F-150, specifically the all-electric Lightning. Now, please do tell me if I'm missing something here, but I am not seeing a big difference in the crumple zone between these two. Where you will start to notice a bigger difference though is in the side impact tests. This is a 3,100 pound cart going nearly 40 miles an hour that simulates a T-bone accident like someone running a red light in an intersection and not only does the Cybertruck stay completely grounded because of the super low center of gravity and its weight but besides the airbags going off it looks like it may be able to just drive away. And here's that same test on the F-150. Which one of these would you rather be in? It's funny to me that people think that Tesla, the company responsible for designing and creating some of the safest cars on the planet, somehow forgot everything they learned with the Cybertruck. All you have to do is look underneath the front of it and it should tell you everything you need to know. They definitely didn't forget. And I know that front crash test looked bad, but you have to understand that hitting an immovable object is absolutely the worst case scenario. Worse than hitting a brick wall or even hitting a house. The Cybertruck is three and a half tons of space grade steel and not many things going up against it will be immovable, but more on that later. The one thing that is unforgivable though is the rear axle snapping in the front crash test, but in reality it doesn't even have one. The Cybertruck actually uses rear wheel steering and has no axle connecting the rear wheels, which is probably why we saw it tow in during the accident. And now that we're done busting a bit of the BS I keep seeing out there, we can finally get into what makes the Cybertruck truly terrifying. And what I'm about to say doesn't just apply to the Cybertruck. Trucks in general have been getting bigger and heavier for quite some time, which makes them increasingly dangerous for everyone around them, as is proven in the crash data. People seem to have drawn a line with the Cybertruck though, saying it's too dangerous. And while I admittedly do agree with them in some aspects, this is America we're talking about here. A normal sized pickup truck these days, like the Ram 1500, can be 6,400 pounds. A normal heavy duty truck, like the F 250, can weigh in at over 7,600 pounds. And although these monstrosities may seem barbaric to the people that live in parts of the world with strict pedestrian safety standards, the US buys them up like crazy. Even the people who have absolutely no need for a truck will get them because they want the biggest, baddest thing on the road. And trust me when I say they are absolutely everywhere. To drive this point home even more, in the US you can go out and get something like this International CXT, which weighs in at a whopping 14,500 pounds. And get this, you don't even need a special license. It's absolute insanity. But anyways, back to the Cybertruck. There's no way around it. What Tesla has made is a checkmate in the quote-unquote tough truck world. 
This thing is basically a street legal tank weighing in at about 6,800 pounds and is made from space grade stainless steel. But unlike a regular tank, it can get from zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.6 seconds. And the scariest part about that for me and everyone else on the road is that just like those trucks we looked at a second ago, anyone will be able to go out and buy one. I've gotten a ride in the Model S Plaid and remember thinking to myself that I can't believe a car that can accelerate this quickly doesn't require some kind of special license to drive because the amount of trouble you can get into if you're inexperienced or if you hold on to that accelerator pedal just a little bit too long is truly scary. You can get from zero to high speed accident in absolutely no time at all, which happens all the time, especially in Teslas because they really go when you put your foot down. Remember the pedal misapplication that happened in China where the driver just kept pressing harder and harder on the accelerator pedal thinking it was the brake and trying to stop? Two lives were lost in the incident, but now imagine if he had been driving a Cybertruck instead. A scary thought indeed, and incidents like this one are a lot more common than you might think. A study done by the NHTSA estimated that approximately 16,000 crashes like this take place due to pedal misapplications every year in the U.S. That's 44 per day. A pedal misapplication in a Cybertruck is a horrifying thought. Tesla does go through great measures to try to make this not happen. They even have things built into the software of the vehicle that will stop it when it detects a misapplication of the accelerator pedal, which has already probably saved a lot of lives, but humans will be humans and will always find a way. In summary, the Cybertruck scares me, but so do all the other trucks and giant SUVs on the road. It's hard to imagine that some 16-year-old TikToker can go out and buy something like this as their very first car without any real driving experience. But like I said, this isn't a problem that Tesla created, and I don't think it's their responsibility to fix it. I mean, I didn't hear anyone complaining about safety when the Hummer EV was released, which weighs literally more than a ton more, and also does 0 to 60 extremely quickly, at least not the same way they're complaining about the Cybertruck. So for all of you that are upset that something this dangerous can be allowed on our road, I agree with you. But you have to realize there's a lot more dangerous things in this trucks on our roads right now. And my problem is that many of the people complaining about the Cybertruck are the same people who buying those big stupid trucks in the first place when all they do is drop the kids off at school or go to the grocery store. If you're European, you get a pass. I doubt you're ever going to see one on the roads because it's very unlikely to pass your strict pedestrian impact testing. It's almost like these giant oversized vehicles are fundamentally unsafe for everybody around them. Who would have thought? But anyways, I think I'm going to end my rant here. We'll have to see how things play out after it's released and see just how unsafe it is for everyone around it. But my prediction is that it'll probably be pretty horrible, just like all the other trucks on our road. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you've gotten to the very end. I didn't set out to make a video like this, it just kind of happened, so definitely give me your feedback in the comments if I should continue making similar videos or just stay in my lane on autopilot. Hopefully I didn't upset you big SUV and truck drivers, and if I did, good. Until next time, everyone.